Welcome back to Economic Outlook. In my last entry, I said that this week I would focus my attention on the recommendations of the chairpeople of the President's Deficit Reduction Commission. Well, I decided to postpone that video for two weeks. There are several reasons, but the most important is that I want to focus on the recommendations of the committee as a whole and not just the two chairpeople. There are some very interesting reasons why the two chairmen released their thoughts when they did and I'll cover this in the next video. However, I want that video to focus more on the potential policies and ramifications of the committee as a whole and not just on this first part of their analysis. So check back in two weeks after Thanksgiving and I should have a new video posted about the Deficit Reduction Commission. This week, I want to explore a topic I've looked at briefly in the past. Sometimes even the best intentioned plans to reduce fossil fuel consumption and greenhouse gas emissions can have unintended consequences. Today, I want to look at the introduction of electric cars and explain why these new vehicles may only shift the consumption of fossil fuels to other developing countries. Before I get started, you may be wondering why I haven't weighed in on the controversy surrounding the Chevy Volt. If you haven't read about this, basically the drivetrain on the Volt is in some cases powered by gasoline rather than a true electric motor. I think George Will did the best job of any columnist that I've read explaining the situation and essentially excoriating General Motors and the Obama administration for its role in the entire uh, controversy sh surrounding the Volt. He's done a much better job of explaining the situation and his feelings basically reflect my own in a more concise and probably well-written way than I could portray. So if you want my opinion on this whole controversy, just read the George Will column that I will link on my website, and it pretty much explains the situation. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I want to get back to my main topic and explain why uh, the introduction of electric cars will only shift fossil fuel consumption. Many people assume that because electric cars don't run on traditional gasoline, that they'll reduce overall greenhouse gas emissions and fossil fuel consumption around the world. Unfortunately, the concept is more complicated than this, and I want to explain some of the reasons why. Before I get started, it's important to understand the history of petroleum as an energy source. In the early 1800s, whale oil was an important source of wax used in lamps to light people's homes and businesses. In the 1850s, however, kerosene was introduced. Kerosene was distilled from petroleum, and it was much cheaper and more efficient as a lighting source. In 1897, Rudolf Diesel built an engine that used heat and pressure to fire internal combustion reactions. Eventually, petroleum was refined into diesel fuel used in these types of engines. This was much more cheap and efficient than coal or steam power. In 1913, William Burton invented a process called thermal cracking, in which heat and pressure were applied to petroleum. This process basically distilled petroleum from heavy hydrocarbons into lighter, more volatile hydrocarbons. The resulting fuel was easier to burn and more energy efficient. This essentially allowed refineries to produce gasoline much more quickly. In 1937, Eugene Houndry further improved the process with the introduction of catalytic cracking. Catalytic cracking works by introducing chemicals into petroleum refining. These chemicals catalyze reactions, and the reactions result in the same lighter, more volatile molecules as the heat and pressure process that Burton introduced. However, the catalytic process is much faster and results in cleaner, more efficient gasoline. So the combination of refining enhancements allowed for essentially the mass production of gasoline that we know today. Okay, right now you're probably wondering what the point of my history lesson is, and basically it's this. At each step in the process, petroleum has been refined into a cheaper and more efficient source of energy for consumers. Every major transportation revolution has been predicated upon the discovery of a cheaper and more efficient energy source. We've seen this from the introduction of locomotives to the development of modern automobiles. Your next logical question is, what does this have to do with electric cars? And my point is this the shift from standard petroleum-based automobiles to electric cars does not represent a substantial 
transformative gain in either efficiency or cost to the consumer. To reduce global oil consumption and greenhouse gas emissions, we need a new type of technology that is more efficient and cheaper for consumers to use than standard petroleum. Right now, electric cars simply don't meet this criteria. Even if we are able to make a complete shift to electric vehicles in the United States, this still leaves several developing countries with growing demands for automobiles and suburban lifestyles. And in these countries, the cost of electric cars is still prohibitive for their consumers. It's much cheaper to buy less expensive, standard, oil-based cars. And that's what people will do. And my point is this. Even if a country like the United States can reduce its overall oil consumption, other countries around the world will still use oil because of its relative lack of expense relative to its energy density. It's still far cheaper to use oil in places like China or India, where economies are growing, than other sources. And because oil is so cheap, the consumption will only shift from a place like the United States to a developing country. Let's look at exactly how this might occur. This chart shows global carbon dioxide emissions for 2007. Not surprisingly, several major developing countries are near the top of the list, like the United States, Japan, Germany, Canada, and the United Kingdom. However, other countries that are still developing, like China, India, and Russia, also produce high levels of carbon dioxide. China is actually producing more carbon dioxide annually than the United States. And this really shouldn't be surprising because of the differences in the two countries' economies. China is primarily a manufacturing economy, while the United States has shifted more towards services. China uses far more energy uh, in its production processes than the United States. It also relies more heavily on coal-fired technology. So China and the United States are by far the largest producers of global carbon dioxide. But how does this relate to oil consumption and other energy use? Energy consumption is heavily dependent on a country's economic output. This chart shows global GDP adjusted for purchasing power parity. As you would expect, the United States has the largest economy, followed by China, Japan, India, Germany, the United Kingdom, and several other developing and developed nations. Annual crude oil consumption also closely mirrors economic development. This chart shows annual crude oil consumption in millions of barrels per year. As you would expect, the United States is by far the world's largest consumer of oil, followed by China, Japan, and India. However, it's also helpful to look at these figures on a more per capita basis. This chart shows tons of carbon dioxide emitted per $1 million of GDP. The blue bars represent developed economies, and the red bars represent developing countries. For example, the United States emits around 400 tons of carbon dioxide for every $1 million of GDP it produces. China, on the other hand, emits almost 725 tons of carbon dioxide for every $1 million of GDP generated. This really isn't surprising given the manufacturing base in countries like China and India. The United States, Japan, Germany, and most of the Eurozone are more based on service economies. In some ways, these economies are less efficient on a per capita basis, but more efficient in terms of carbon dioxide per output of economic development. As countries like China and India become more economically developed, you would expect their carbon dioxide emissions per unit of GDP to decline. This doesn't mean that overall carbon emissions would still go down, but in terms of carbon emissions per unit of GDP, you would expect these countries to come down more toward the levels of their more developed counterparts like the United States and Japan. As countries become more economically advanced, they rely on crude oil for more of their energy needs. And this chart demonstrates this phenomenon.
This chart shows carbon emissions from oil consumption. It's shown as a percentage of total carbon emissions. So for example, the United States produces about 60% of its carbon emissions from crude oil. And for the calculation, I've assumed that a barrel of oil produces about half a ton of carbon emissions. This chart is almost an inversion of the previous chart. More developed economies, like the United States, generate a larger proportion of their carbon emissions from crude oil than other sources. Conversely, countries like China and India use crude oil for a lesser percentage of their overall carbon emissions. So what exactly does this mean? What is my point? Well, as countries like China and India continue to modernize their economies, they're likely to become more dependent on petroleum and other fossil fuels. You'll see the percentage of total carbon emissions increase for crude oil. If the demand for oil in countries like China and India continues to increase, it will more than offset gains in efficiency in countries like the United States when they shift to other technologies like electric cars from standard petroleum-based internal combustion engines. My point is not that electric vehicles are useless or that it's somehow futile to try to offset global petroleum consumption. What I do want to make clear is that the issue is extremely complicated. Simply making gains in efficiency in countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, and other developed economies will be offset by growing demand in countries like India and China. And this is understandable. These countries have seen the standard of living in other areas, and they naturally want to emulate it. To reduce global consumption, we need a paradigm shift in energy and transportation. And I'm not saying this is an easy task. Everyone has been frustrated with the progress in hydrogen technology and other advanced research. My main point is that we can't take a purely localized view to greenhouse gas emissions or oil usage. Even if developed economies are able to shift some of their oil production to electricity, developing countries like China and India will still view oil as a cheap and affordable source of energy. We need to come up with something that is both more efficient and less expensive than standard petroleum technology if we want to truly reduce the amount of oil consumed and the greenhouse gas emissions that this consumption causes. Thank you as always for joining me here at Economic Outlook, and I will be back in two weeks with a look at President Obama's Deficit Reduction Commission. There won't be a video next week since it's Thanksgiving. I hope everyone has a great holiday, and I'll see you next time.